This is my RB25 swapped S Foldane, and it's gonna make a bunch of power, I swear, once I figure out what's wrong with it. So what do you do when all of a sudden your project car runs low on power, or even worse, won't start at all? Well, maybe you consider pushing it into the ocean, or even worse, pushing it to a mechanic shop and paying them to tell you what's wrong with it. Well, that just won't do. So where do you start when your car won't? So today we're going to give you a proper introduction to my S14 and then we're going to use it to show you guys how to diagnose a car that's running poorly or just won't run at all. I'm Zach and this is another one of my money pits. If you've been watching this show, you've probably seen this little Nissan in the background staring at me, green with envy while I spend countless hours working on the Miata. Well, today, that all changes. So this is a car I've always wanted. It's a 1997 Nissan 240SX, which means it's a Koki or a facelift front end, which means it's the best looking front end of all the 240s we got here in the States. But where I'm from, you really don't come across these that often. And so I never had one. But as soon as I moved out here, I knew it was only a matter of time before I got sucked into one. And I sure did get sucked into one. First off, the body is a huge positive. It's super clean and you really don't find these in this good a shape that often. And if you do, people are asking, way too much money for them. But the other biggest positive is under the hood. It's got an RB25. It's a straight six turbo and it is awesome. It makes all the noises you could ever want it to make. But when I bought the car, the positives really ended there. It, it was a clean body and it had an RB25, but it needed a lot of work to get it roadworthy. We've done a lot of stuff since I bought it. I've replaced the turbo. I've done the whole ignition system. I've done the whole fuel system. I did a new throttle body. I did a new uh, catch can. I did a new wastegate. So much stuff has been done. And we are so close to getting this thing on the dyno and actually making power. But then the other day it fell on its face and has been having issues running at all. Now I've got a pretty good hunch of what is going on, but I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you guys how to do some diagnosis on a car that's running poorly. So to just jump right into it, in terms of diagnosis, the first thing we need to understand is what an engine needs to run. It's pretty simple. It needs air, it needs fuel, it needs spark, and it needs compression. So we'll take a look at those four overall systems and then we'll figure out which system the issue lies within and then we'll take a deeper look at that system and pinpoint the issue. It's gonna be a day of doctoring. Call me Dr. House. First, let's talk about air. I'd say usually in my experience, it's not air, but let's talk about a few issues you could have with the air system, especially like on a turbo car, uh, your boost couplers can come loose and you can have a boost leak, which is not good. Then you're not getting all the air into your engine that you're supposed to be. Uh, if you've got any sort of a leak after the thing that meters your air, like if you've got a mass airflow sensor on your car, like the Miata does, if there's a leak after the mass airflow sensor, that can confuse the ECU. If the mass airflow sensor is dirty or maybe the wires are worn through, that can also confuse the ECU so that it doesn't know how much air it's getting. So it could be air in those senses. This car doesn't have a mass airflow sensor. It runs on manifold absolute pressure and I just installed that as part of a new ECU. So I know that's not the problem. I know all my boost couplers are tight. I know that air is not the issue in this situation. Okay, next, spark. Spark is maybe the simplest because all you need is a spark and it's pretty easy to check for. I'll show you a couple of really simple ways. The first is with this tool. This is a spark tester and you can get these at any auto parts store, Harbor Freight. They only cost a couple bucks. So real quick, I'm gonna pop off one of my coil packs. Then this is gonna go in line in between the coil pack and the spark plug. And we should see if it's sparking by this lighting up in here. You got it. Okay, so that's one way to test whether or not you have spark, and it's pretty easy if you have that tool. But I'll show you an even easier way uh, with just a spark plug. Okay, so the idea here is just to insert a plug into your coil pack uh, or into your plug wire, and then the only thing we need to do is make sure that somehow we ground the ground side of the plug, which is the threads up to the ground strap. So, uh, easy enough actually, I guess here, we'll just sit it on the turbo. And now I'm gonna go crank the ignition and we should see spark here at the plug if we have spark. All right, so that is how you test spark and we've got spark. So uh, that was pretty easy, right? Now let's move on to compression. 
So doing a compression test can test your valves, your piston rings, your head gasket, all sorts of things internally in your engine. So we're gonna do a quick compression test. I've got my tester here. I think I bought this at Harbor Freight. It was probably 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, it's pretty simple. We just gotta remove a spark plug to test a cylinder. We'll take this hose and it goes right down in to the plug threads. And now we've got a hose attached to our cylinder. So we'll put our pressure gauge on it. Nice and easy. Thumbs of steel. Don't fail me now. Ah. Okay, so now we don't have any spark, so we're good to do our compression test. The engine's not gonna start. Generally, in any gasoline engine, you're gonna want over 100 PSI in all of your cylinders, and you're gonna want them all to be within about 10% of each other. So without further ado, I'm gonna go crank it. You're gonna keep an eye on it, right? Okay, how'd we do? About 120. 120, that's a little lower than I was expecting, but I know that compression isn't the issue on this, so we're gonna move to the fourth thing that an engine needs to run, and that's fuel. Uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do in terms of checking our fuel system is to check and make sure that there's fuel pressure. I bought this kit from Harbor Freight, I think it was about 40 bucks, or you can rent this from any auto parts store. It's a fuel pressure gauge, and you can put this right in line of your fuel line uh, with some supplied hose, or it comes with a bunch of fittings that will screw into a uh, receptacle or a, a Schrader valve on your fuel rail. But if you're like me and you're fiddling with this stuff a lot and you wanna be able to keep an eye on your fuel pressure pretty regularly, Regularly, you've got a fuel pressure gauge on your fuel pressure regulator in your engine bay. An engine usually wants about 43 and a half pounds of fuel pressure at idle, really at all times. So when I turn the key on, I should see this come up to about 43 and a half PSI. That's what I have it set to. <gasps> okay, so what happened? We got about 20. 20, that's low. Our fuel pressure is only at 20 PSI when it should be at about 43 and a half. So that means we've got an issue with our fuel system. And there's only a handful of things in our fuel system that it can be. So let's work our way through the fuel system and check them off. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually visually inspect the fuel system from front to back to make sure that we don't have any just straight up leaks. And also use your nose, cause you know, gas stinks. So. Okay, no fuel leaks. Uh, I've actually been through the fuel system front to back. I've had the gas tank out because that's a whole thing on these. Uh, I know there are no fuel leaks um, in the external sense, but now it does kind of sound like we've got maybe an internal leak. The next thing we've got is this fuel pressure regulator. All right, so I guess there are kind of two ways that our fuel pressure regulator could be the problem. For one, the diaphragm inside of the regulator could be torn, which would let it leak up into this top, which would mean that this hose would be fuel Fuel of full, full of fuel, and it isn't. <laughs> Doesn't even really smell like fuel. So that's fine, not the diaphragm there. So the other thing that could happen is that the uh, fuel pressure regulator could be stuck open inside and just bleeding pressure back to the tank constantly. So uh, what I'll do is pop the return line off the bottom of the regulator here, and then I'll go cycle the key. And if it basically just dumps fuel out the return, then we know that our fuel pressure regulator is just letting pressure off. You good? Yep. Just key on. So you want gas coming out, right? No. I'm just kidding. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that rules out our fuel pressure regulator, which is to be expected. I mean, it's a new regulator and they don't really go bad that uh, frequently. So this moves us further along in our fuel system. We've ruled out leaks, we've ruled out our injectors, and we've ruled out our pressure regulator. So now it's time to go back to the tank and look at the thing that makes the pressure in the first place, the fuel pump and its circuit. All right, so now we're back here at the trunk. We've worked our way down the fuel system and we've gotten back to where the gas tank is. And in the gas tank lives the fuel pump. So we're gonna test the fuel pump and its circuit, which should be pretty easy. The setup's pretty good. My battery is right here. My fuel pump relay is right here. And my fuel pump itself is right in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pop out this relay and I'm gonna use this jumper I made, just a little piece of wire with two connectors. So I'm gonna jumper the power on the relay to the fuel pump so I can power up the fuel pump constantly. And then I'm gonna check and just make sure that the fuel pump is getting battery voltage. I'm gonna do that with my multimeter. 
so to check voltage, uh, in this case, we're gonna be checking voltage on an automotive system, which works on a 12 volt battery. So uh, this is not an auto ranging multimeter like some of them are. You have to select the range which you're gonna be measuring in. So since this is a 12 volt system, we know it's gonna be less than 20 volts. So I've got selected the 20 volt range on my voltmeter. So we're good to measure anything below 20 volts. Let's go ahead and check battery voltage. So the battery's got about 12 and three quarters volts, nice and charged, that's sweet. So now we're gonna power up the fuel pump and see how much voltage it's getting. Now we can see the fuel pump's getting about our battery voltage, it's getting 12 volts, so that seems pretty normal. Uh, so that is just kind of another thing checked off. The pump is getting voltage, so why is it not making pressure? Let's get down to the pump, get it out of the tank, and take a closer look. All right, so it seems that our fuel pump has voltage, so that sounds good. It sounds like the problem must lie with our fuel pump. But before we go pulling it out and replacing it, we need to do one more test, and it's a really important test. It's called a voltage drop test, and basically what this is gonna do is allow me to measure the circuit the fuel pump is in, in terms of wiring, and make sure that the problem doesn't lie within the wiring. And basically what we're doing is looking to make sure that there's no large use of voltage uh, anywhere in that circuit. We're gonna wanna see about a half a volt at most uh, in terms of voltage drop on this circuit. So let's go ahead and do it. Positive on the positive terminal and negative on the positive terminal of the fuel pump. And again, we're looking for half a volt or less. Ooh, baby. So we've got 0.49, so it should be okay. It is a little bit high though. Now let's do the same thing with the ground circuit. Remember the fuel pump is still running. Negative onto the negative terminal of the battery, positive to the negative terminal on the fuel pump. And we're getting about half a volt here too, just a touch over actually, 0.53 which is on the upper end of how much voltage drop I'm okay with seeing, but it should be okay for a fuel pump. So now that we know that we don't have a huge resistance in our wiring and everything else seems to be okay, now it's time to pull that fuel pump out and see what's going on. Oh, what do we got, what do we got? You see that hose? That should be all the way down on this little outlet here. Uh, instead, it's blown off, AKA not gonna make much fuel pressure, AKA our problem. This is a kind of inconvenient spot. All right, so that is everything. Now, basically all we need to do is jumper our relay to turn the fuel pump on, go to the front and see if we've got fuel pressure. I think we're gonna. Hey, 44 PSI. That's what you wanna see. We've got fuel pressure, which means this thing should start pretty easily. Ah! <laughs> what was that? Was it a spider? Yeah. Okay. Bro, I felt that crawling on me. That was a genuine scream. I know, it was great. Was it a Black Widow? Just tell me yes. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, so, here we go. Just been a minute since, since she's been alive. All right, she's running, let's let it warm up. Hey, it's finally not lean at idle. So this, this is an untuned car. I, I've got it on a base tune. I've got it tuned to the point that I'm able to drive it around the block, but it's not quite tuned. So uh, we're gonna let it warm up and then we'll see if she goes around the block. All right, so we're just taking it for a quick spin around the block to make sure that things are running right. I'm feeling pretty good and starting to think that it's time to go get this thing tuned. I need a diff. Well, sweet. That's, that's a productive day in my book. We got this thing ready to go to the dyno, which is all I really wanted. And I think along the way, we've hopefully taught you guys how to diagnose some stuff. And the fact is, diagnosis is a very deep well. There is a lot of stuff, so we've really only scratched the surface. When issues pop up, we'll cover some more diagnosis. I hope you guys like this one. I appreciate you watching. Follow me on Instagram, at Zach Job. Follow Donut at Donut Media, and I'll see you guys next week.